Welcome to Bringing History to Life. Today, we're going to talk about the concept of noblesse oblige. Noblesse oblige was what we talked about when we said to whom great things were given, great things were expected. So, the wealthy, people who had made it, who owned land, etc., were expected to share that wealth with the others around them. So we saw this in the great houses. We saw it on the television show Downton Abbey, how the Earl felt that it was his responsibility to look after his farmers and his tenants and to keep Downton Abbey alive. It was the same thing in Canada. The great merchants contributed to war efforts, to social activities, in ways that would far outstrip anything that's being done today. For example, the Eaton family. Now, Timothy Eaton started his great retail empire by taking a wagon from farm to farm and selling hard goods to the farm wives, frying pans, pots, other things like that. But he built a giant company and the giant company was spread across Canada. And when his son, Sir John Craig Eaton, took over the business, he felt it was his responsibility to give back. So World War I is a great example of noblesse oblige on the part of the Eatons. From money, between the Eaton's ownership and the store, they would buy $6 million worth of war bonds, about $60 million worth today. The company insisted that its workers be taken care of, so if a man volunteered to serve in the Canadian Expeditionary Force and he was married, he would draw his full Eaton salary for the duration of the war. And if he was single, it was half. The Eaton Company established a parallel system to the Red Cross. And when Eaton's men were taken prisoner by the Germans, representatives of the company would show up at the prisoner of war camps and distribute care packages just for those who had worked for Eaton's. Even at the end, when the war came to a close, the Eaton's were still there contributing. Many accused them of profiting from the war. They were one of the biggest war suppliers. But at the end of the day, John Craig Eaton insisted that the only profit that the Eaton Company would make from World War I was a single Canadian dollar. So, noblesse oblige was part of how society operated. And at the end of World War I, with the introduction of an income tax, that noblesse oblige started to die away. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon.